Go more towards the fog lights. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, and we're coming to you live. Right here from inside the main build facility of Bubba's Exotic Motorsports, I'm Tom. Ladies man's right there checking out the base of the camera, and the master enters stage right. Good morning, Bub. How are we doing today? So, as you guys can see, this is the BEM Rough Country 15 Jeep me. Wrangler. So let me tell you, this thing is massive. Um, six inch lift, 40 inch tires. As you guys can see, what is in the title in the description is truly what is on here. Maybe a little bigger than it should be for a Jeep. I don't know about that, Bub. This episode is brought to you by Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. That's Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. Miss Outlaw Boutique. Miss Outlaw Boutique is exclusively on the web, ladies and gentlemen, at MissOutlawBoutique.com. Rough country, Bub. Rough country lifts for trucks and Jeeps. Rough country are lifts and off roading. Done Bubba style. Done Bubba style. Got to talk a little bit about the upcoming Orange County Choppers episode as well, Bub. Bub, this is the BEM Rough Country Miss Outlaw Supermodel Layla Von Athey Jeep JK. Not JL, right? JK? Correct. JK. A lot of things have happened on this vehicle, Bub. You have a complete Rough Country suspension tied underneath this thing. Nitto wheel and tire combination. Nitto uh, tires with uh, moto metal wheels. Why moto metal this time instead of something out of American racing? Well, pure size, man. So this is, uh, of course, moto, me moto metal is a company from Wheel Pros. Well, yes. Um, so the only reason that I went with this design was for not only the availability of the rim, but also for the fact it is the exact size that I wanted. 24 by 14s, not the generic 12s that most guys kind of push that limit on when they run on Jeeps. Sometimes they'll throw on a 12 inch wide with like a minus 44 offset. These things, we went crazy with a minus, uh, minus 76 offset on a 14 inch wide. So we are able to run a Nitto 40, 15, 50 on these rims. The stretch was beautiful. The fitment is spot on. I am honestly blown away with how massive this lift is with the full flexibility that it can do, the total functionality that it can do. And for this street queen down here, this thing on the road has zero scrubbing issues whatsoever on the front end, which is what most people will be like, holy crap, how did you even possibly squeeze 40s under there? The complimenting rough country lift, the six inch, the long arm kit, all the fully adjustable heim joints everywhere allowed us to center this thing in exactly where we needed those front and rear axles to sit so that it did do exactly what it should do. Good morning to our good friend Jack up there in Canada. He says, Bub, sweet Jeep. You know, Jack, I'm five foot eight inches tall, Bub's five nine. You can see that will give you a scale just how tall this Jeep truly is, man. Good morning to Betty Polanski and Mackenzie Woodward from Code 504, Code 504, our S10 conversions. Done Bubba style. Done Bubba style. There it is, Bub. Bub, a lot of great things you've done to this. This isn't just a lift package, and this isn't a wheel and tire combination. First, before we talk about some of the other great things you've done to this vehicle, when you're talking about a minus 44 offset, a minus 32 offset, a plus 56 off, what exactly does that mean? So that's actually a measurement that is in relation to the center line of that rim, right? So center line meaning that would be the zero number you'd start with zero right center dead line. center like if the rim center, is if right? lip so if to 12, lip if it's 14 inches wide seven inches so in the seven inch center. in the middle okay that would essentially turn into zero so we started using a few years ago um really what people know as backside spacing has kind of taken over with today's wider body cars naturally and they've turned into offsets so you're not really considering them backside anymore although it is the exact same thing so you are dealing with millimeters essentially at this point because our cars today run so much tighter, we can tuck them much tighter, we can set those stances much more aggressive and wide, put that rim right at the edge of the body with the way fender wells are rolled in nowadays. Um, so you're working with what you consider millimeters and offsets. On this rim, for example, this is a minus 76, so that is actually going to be 76 millimeters, which is if 25.4 is uh, an inch, so you figure that's about three inches out from the center line, that wheel's gonna push out. So it's pushing, but you're converting the millimeters, like 44 millimeters into inches, is that correct? Yeah, naturally, I'm doing it in my head. How many, for example, millimeters are in an inch? That's what I just did, 25.4. 25.4, yeah. okay, so when you say 44, you're about an inch and a half is what you're saying. Right. Okay. Yeah, so you can just basically do rough ideas, kind of like when you're plotting these things out and figuring out like your build style. If somebody's like, oh, I'm looking at a set of rims, I want to do like a minus 12. Well, that's not going to be too aggressive of a wheel that pushes out too far. Now, if your factory fitment was like a plus 30, and then you go down to like a minus, which on Jeeps it is, that's about what it is, um, you go down to a minus series, you're not only having 
what you're pushing out, but also that plus factor. So if you were like a plus 38 originally, so that's about an inch and a quarter inside the body line, right? Or inside that mm -hmm. fender well, you're gonna naturally push it out there plus all that minus you're adding to it as well. So it's a lot when you start dealing with measurements in terms of millimeters, but it's no different than traditional backside spacing. You have a 14 inch rim, you can take a piece of tape measure and run from the backside of the hub, so where it naturally meets the, the brake hub. rotor, and you can run a straight edge across the furthest lip, the inside lip of the rim, and just measure that distance, seven and five eighths, seven and three sixteenths, whatever that number may be, that's your backside spacing. That can be also converted into an offset in millimeters. Good morning to uh, Adam Boyd. Adam Boyd said, that's a nice ride, Bob. Adam, thank you very much for the positive compliment, man. We do appreciate that. Adam, where are you from? Bub Spanky from Spanky's Hot Rod says hello. So before we go too much further, ramble on about something. I'm going to go get something because you guys are going to wonder how it is at BEM we do such insane things in such sure. a short period of amount of time. This was just at about 12 hours of install time yes, for this full lift, the wheel and tire combo, yeah. getting all the geometry set right, getting all the brackets, getting the alignment done. But wait, it's not done. Okay, well, so ladies and gentlemen, while Bub says that, Jack Bias, Jack says to us, you must be super proud of that young man, smart guy. Jack, let me tell you the story, if I could, please, and everybody around the world. Spanky knows this story. Bub started, I started seeing this talent come Hold out on, of Bub. Before we go too far, you need to back up one because you're offset, okay? And two, how is the Jeep moving without the drive shaft from Rough Country? Because you're driving the it question. off the back, the, the rear drive shaft. Ha. Yes. So one of the things that you do have to do when you go with a six inch lift, typically up to three and a half, four, you can rock on your standard factory oh, wow. Mopar drive shafts. This setup is a slip style shaft, so it will flex. Not like this thing is going to be using it, but of course, Tyler hooked us up with the complete kit from Rough Country that is literally the best in the best of everything that Rough Country does offer for the Jeep JK model line. So this six inch kit, the six inch plus extended drive shafts, these things are ready to go. So you have to take these, change the front and rear yokes, both at the differential and at the transfer case side on the front and the rear drive shafts. That is what we're getting ready to put this beast on the lift to do here in just a few minutes. So we are rocking off that rear drive shaft right now just to move this big girl around. Bub, couple of things. Thank you for that explanation and thank you for telling us what a slip yoke is, Bub. Couple of things. I wanna jump back to Jack's question real quick, Jack. I'm actually writing the book about this right now. I started seeing this with Bub at about the age of four. I was heavily ensconced uh, coming out of the military. I went to school. Um, uh, I was an Air Force police officer. I came out of school. I went to college, uh, got my uh, degree. Then I started seeing this coming out of Bub. I actually worked midnights um, and watched Bub during the day and went to school from 3 to 11, uh, 3 to about 10.30 at night to go, go to college. So it was a pretty Pretty brutal time, a lot of hours, learned a lot from that. I'm the son of a uh, retired Air Force general. A lot of morals, a lot of values were brought to us. Uh, I started seeing this about the age of four with Bub. Um, at the age of eight, I took on a second job at what's now considered advanced auto parts, and Bub would work on a milk crate in a white shirt, because I was a manager. Uh, I worked in uh, Washington, D.C. during the day, took the train in and out. Uh, Bub would stand on a milk crate, literally putting up truck, um, he would do work with clients, uh, with customer service. He would run the cash register, and of course the register always balanced out to where it was supposed to be. And I would give him my paycheck every two weeks so he learned the sense, you know, what the value of money. At the age of nine, Bub tested for his doctor of motors and passed it. That was the youngest person to ever do that. At the, and we continued to cultivate that, that, that what we were seeing with Bub. At the age of 14, he called me from school and he said, that's it, Dad, I'm done with school. Uh, I'm gonna, I wanna open a business with you. And that's how it started. Bub has never taken a formal automotive class. He is all self-taught. His robot style welds that you see are all self-taught. All the technology in his head is self-taught. That's why I'm not a big proponent of formalized education because I've seen what Bub can do. And that's the story. And you'll read about that much more in the book. So thank you very much for the question. Good morning, Kitty Mitchell, who is our lead tech. Joseph Kramer out there says, good morning, Bub. And Mike Spanky says he'll drive this down the Jeep beach anytime, Bub. Hey, so listen, so Spanky, this is one that you'll probably see in Daytona. We actually just missed it this year. Yes. We, it's crazy because we honestly, bro, had all of the parts here for this Jeep. I'd say probably two and a half, three months now. We've had everything lined up here in the facility. That's just how backlogged we've been here. All these parts, the wheels and tires, everything from the lift kit to the amp research steps to all the Smitty Bill armor plating for this thing that are over in the paint shop. Wait till you guys see this thing next, but it has been sitting here on standby for what, three months? It We've has, been trying to yeah, get this built yeah, up. So as you can see it now, this is its 
kind of first stage right now. We've already started doing some mods. As you can see, the grill's done. We've already put all the JW speaker LED lighting in the front of this thing, also on the rear of it. Um, we've done, you know, the door handle accent pieces. Those are very easy, very small, very cheap things. Super, super fun, right? You just do these little inserts inside the door handles. They look good. They match the wheels really nice. You get that little hole stud, you know, studded design with it. We actually did those in a base coat, clear coat, so it matched the white color of the Jeep, not just like a raw billet. Um, but we do have a lot in the works, man. We have all of the Smittybill XRCs, the front bumper, front fenders, side body cladding, rear fenders, rear bumper, amp research steps. We have a lot of pieces that are in paint right now getting done, stripped all the way down to raw metal, primed, base coat, clear coat in the white. So this thing is going to look massive when it's done. Kenny Mitchell, my lead tech, can you come through the film stage floor, please, and get Diesel? He is getting a little warm. I want to get some water to him in the main facility. Let me unlock that door, bub. We will walk this Jeep as well, bub. Uh, and there we go. Little man, we're going to get you some water here. Bub, let me grab the camera. Uh, Spanky out there would like to know, is this a gun show or car show? Sleeves are for girls. <laughs> How about that? Jack says it's going to be a great book. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to grab the camera, if I could, please. Listen, and I'm going to walk the Jeep with Bub so you can see some of the small touches and details that he does to these. Little things you'll notice, like the tow hooks, which are now uh, good morning to the BEM uh, dirt track driver, Mr. Mark Hoffman, as well. Bub will be doing these in an offsetting white or something like that. I'm also going to take you over by the fender, by the uh, um, bumper, Bub, you call the bumper that Bub is custom fabricating for this build as yeah, well. Yeah, you know, all this stuff is coming off. We've got, um, as you know, we've already got the Hellcat style, which is everybody knows is the new, brand new Dodge Hellcats. We actually have one of those hoods built specifically from Extreme Dimensions for this Jeep. So Thank it is you, going Kenny. to have a nasty, aggressive look on the front end of it. He said, don't dick with him, dude. Go get your water, bro. Here you go. Go get your water. Go get your water, baby. I want you to get cool down so a little bit. So we've Thank you, got Kenny. the Hellcat style hood for this thing. It is going to change the entire face of it. Plus, once we do all this extra front fenders, front bumper, all that stuff gets changed. We do have the LED fog lights that are going to go into it as well that match up with the front turns and also the headlights. A lot of pieces that are going on this thing, so the next time you see it, which will be in the next couple days, is going to be insane. Good morning to Angie uh, out there. Thank you, Angie, for joining us. Uh, the dirt track driver uh, for the Bubba's Exotic Motorsports team, uh, Mr. Mark Hoffman, says, Good morning, Bub Lloyd and Tom Lloyd, and my four-legged buddy, Big Money. Number 12, number 32, number 88, and number 191, 151 are loaded up and ready to go tonight. We will be hearing from Mark tomorrow live with a report on how the BEM dirt track team did tonight. They're killing it out there, Bub. A lot of great stuff. Bub, I'm going to grab the uh, camera if I could, please. I want people to see the raw metal here and hear your ideas of what's going on next because we'll continue to bring them this build. So, Bub, if you'll excuse me, let me step over here and grab this camera for everybody. That's going to get broken. So let's, Bob, let's take a look right here now in front of the Jeep. Let's let everybody see exactly how wicked this thing is starting to look. Spanky, what are your thoughts on that? Look at the eyes that Bub is putting on this thing here. Take a look at that, guys. What do you think, Jack? What do you think of that right there? I mean, all the way down to, I'll actually show some accent pieces. Don't show this sloppy toolbox right now. It's a filthy mess. Bub, let's, no, 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 no. Let's, uh, let's do this. Okay, so you show right. that, Bub. So when you start doing accent pieces, right, let's go around to the passenger side. So when you do these accent pieces, it's all about knowing how to play with certain colors, how to contrast. Some guys like to do flashy. Us at BEM, we like to build super clean, right? So our contrast colors may not be something that is, uh, you know, bright greens, bright reds, although there are clients that want that kind of stuff. Me, personally, on this Jeep, we did offsets in gloss white. Go figure, it matches the Jeep really well. So we did the actual accents here in the door handle inserts. Very simple. Again, a very cheap upgrade, but just enough to take these basic black plastic handles and add a little nice piece of touch to it. So the next thing you do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the stock Jeep hood latch here. You can see that it shows some fading from the South Florida sun, even though it's a little over a year old. And let's see what Bub is going to replace that with. So now what's going to be next is <laughs> these will be the replacement design once they're bolted on. So again, you can see that same little piece, very small CNC cut, base coat, clear coat, and gloss white. It matches the paint, and it gives it that nice, heavy-duty, industrial-style feel and look to it. Something a lot better than cheap plastic crap. And you know what's not bad, Bub? The beautiful supermodel Layla Von Athey drives this Jeep. Here are the tow hooks that will remain on this vehicle, ladies and gentlemen, that will be also painted in accent white. Now, I know Those everybody, Bub, black. Everybody wants to know, let's just put it this way. There's about 265 grand sitting in that box that you see sitting right there. The length of that box is what, Bub? 20, 25 feet long? Yeah, 24. Something like that. So, Bub, let's go over here. I'd like everybody to see how you work in your mind. So let's open one of your drawers. Doesn't matter. Pick a drawer. Yeah, but people are just going to say all the tools are so clean because I don't work. Now, shut that drawer, Bub, if you would. Right. And let's go down one, two, three, four drawers and see what's in there. 
What? Every screwdriver is turned the same way. Well, unless you guys have dicked with it. Then I come over here and everything's a freaking wreck. That's exactly right. It is Friday. It is cleanup day, bub. So we'll get back to that. Here is the Moto Metal wheel and tire combination you went with, bub, as well. For everybody to see. Bub, let's take a look over here, if we could, please, at the bumper you will be fabricating, and what do we see sitting on top of it, and why? So yeah, man, so this is actually the <laughs> Smittybill XRC front bumper. You can actually confirm that if you'd like by seeing the box that I use to make my cardboard template. So what I'm doing is, this is the top side of the bumper, push bar that's on here. I'm actually going to be cutting off all of the aftermarket lighting tabs because we do already have full LEDs on the thing, plus Rough Country has hooked us up with a 50 inch windshield bar, so we don't need any extra lighting adding on to what we've already got. A windshield bar is what, bub? So right at the top of the windshield, 50 inch straight bar. So you have that one that's gonna be on there. You also have the LED low beams, high beams, daytime running lights, also the front fog lights, and marker lights with turn signals, all LED. So the front of this thing is already going to be bright enough. So we are going to get rid of these optional brackets that come welded on and are already powder coated in. We're gonna cut that off and smooth these welds in. So it's just the bar itself, nice and clean. And then the top side of this, again, this is a street queen down here in South Florida, especially for MOB. This Jeep is going to be super smooth. Probably never gonna see mud or dirt, but it's gonna look its part, I'll tell you that much. So we are gonna pull this front section out of here where it is wide open. Naturally, you have a winch that sits here and that's where you can run out the front would be a cable with a hook on it that you can hook and either pull yourself out of the mud or maybe somebody else. That's what this section is open for. We are going to template it up and do 316 steel plating, weld all of this in so it's nice and smooth and sealed, grind it in, and then we'll base coat clear this whole bump, uh, this entire bumper in white. We, in white, bub. So your body mat, you're removing the textured finish and yeah. your body matching that. Yeah, so this is all <laughs> going to be a smooth finish. And then actually at the bottom side of this bumper, I'll show you here. So the bottom side actually has some accent pieces on it in terms of just little you know padding plating that's on here. So we are going to put these back on in this satin style black finish to again play off some of that white, some of that black. You do have that color contrast in like the hood hinges that you just saw, also in the door handles that you saw. So some of that color matching is going to look really good like that. Right on, bub. Let's just take a quick look, bub, if we can walk down the side. I'll let everybody kind of see the Miss Outlaw Boutique, Bubba's Exotic Motorsports, Rough Country Jeep. As we can see, Bub kind of walking down that way there. We'll give you a glance at the back side of it, ladies and gentlemen, as well. And you can see some of the great upgrades Bub has done back here as well. Now, I know that that stock OEM bumper, Bub, will not remain there. Yeah, that's... Let's uh, talk about the... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Bub. That's actually coming off. As you can see, we do already have the LED taillights on here. We have done the license plate relocation to the center of the rear gate. Point that out. We are probably going to maybe do some of this stuff in base coat, clear coat white. I, I kind of feel like there's a lot of black going on back here, a little more than I want to contrast with. Um, tail lights, I'm okay leaving black, but I'm feeling like probably all the bracketry here, all the actual hinge covers here, I'll probably pull all that stuff off of there and do it in a base coat, clear coat, gloss white. So it'll look nice and clean, but blend in super, super beautiful when it's done. In case people wonder how large a sponsor Rough Country is, can you point to the banner right over your head there, bub? There is the Rough Country banner right there next to Miss Outlaw Boutique. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This kind of gives you an overview, a preamble, if you will, to what goes through Bub's mind from a design perspective. We have people call in and ask all the time, how does Bub come up with some of his ideas? Well, there you get to see it, right, Bub? That's it. Now, when will this car be ready to go out on the street, Bub? So this thing is actually going to be um, at a pretty solid concert unveil next week. Um, that's Would you like to discuss what concert that is? Yeah, so it's going to actually uh, be shown off at Luke Bryan, right? So that's going to sit up front and uh, right at the main entrance of the stadium. So this thing has to be ready Thursday. Of course, in the automotive world, everything is a deadline. Yep. Um, but we are going to be cranking pretty solid through the weekend, although we do have to pay attention to his birthday. Uh, and also Father's Day, so the weekend's going to be probably way longer than I expected it to be, uh, but we have a lot of work to get done between now and then, because I probably still have a full minimum two days worth of just straight up assembly before I even get these parts painted, base coat, clear coat, wet sanded, buffed, prepped, lined up on tables, get everything assembled, 
A lot of work left to do. How about this, bub? Mark Hoffman said it's the first weekend in five that it hasn't rained. They're going to get the cars out there. That Jeep needs, uh, he says, that Jeep needs stripes. Uh, it's too white. You just do the little black accents about That's that, it. right, bub? He says, a hell, Mark Hoffman say, uh, goes on to say, the hell with the bumper. I like that drop top 51 right behind it, bub. Hey, pretty solid right <laughs> You've there. You've got your hands in everything, don't That's you, right. How about that? And Mark Hoffman says, hmm, Florida Tag needs to say outlaw. You know, it's so here's what's funny about that. So Florida tags, yes, you can get custom plates made. Let me tell you, it is a process to get them done. I will say the one thing I loved about Virginia, and I hate to say this. Because yeah, there's, there's nothing to I like about, about Virginia. There, um, is that it was so easy in order to get yourself a Vanity custom plate. plate. You yeah. could literally go online. You had your own personal login for all your DMV vehicles. When you typed in your driver's license number, it showed your motorcycles, your cars, you know, what had, you know, it showed like copies of your scanned in license, all your license plates, your registration, your insurance company. It had everything there. And if you needed to update, you could quickly update, right? So they we're way ahead of the curve in that aspect of that that state, right? Which is pretty good. But everything else about everything that else state was a total was backwards wreck. Backwards asses. Um, yeah. So what's nice is if you wanted to change a plate, you could literally just log on. You could do this ten times a month if you wanted to. That's how much they didn't care. You could log on. You could click on the vehicle under your information and be like, okay, well I'm going to click on my Jeep and I'm going to replace tag or create new plate, right? And you just click on it and it will literally give you the little seven blocks. You type in what you want it to be and it'll say plate taken, plate available. You click buy, $10, you get it for the next two years, right? It's just that simple. You would have it in a couple days, easy. Down in Florida, totally different. You have to literally do this thing the old school mom and pop way. You literally print off a form that is looks like it was probably typed up in 1972, sure. yeah. right? Basic as crap. Five lines and of options plus seven open you know lines you would write on. You literally have to write down the five different styles of what you would kind of want. Then you send this paperwork in, which probably takes about two weeks to pass through. Who the freak it has to pass through and get to Tallahassee, right? Somehow yeah, that'll get exactly, screwed up yeah. and take two weeks to happen. Yeah. And then you have to wait for them to respond back to you and say, okay, well, we have these five. That's what you wanted. This is the only one that's available that will allow you to use. So would you like to go ahead and do it? So it's a whole entire process. And that's why I'm like, I just don't even feel like wasting my time. Thing is, so Governor Scott's done a great job with this state, Bob. A lot of great things that go on here. It's a very live free state and it's a beautiful state. The weather's great, uh, but I agree with you. The license plates are kind of a pain in the butt. Everybody, uh, time to get uh, tags from VA for that Jeep. No, I wouldn't give Virginia a dime of my money. Would you, Bob? No, no chance. Absolutely. <laughs> Plus they rail you on the taxes when you go oh to redo them every year. How about oh. the fact that for, that here in Florida, Mark, uh, the way they do it, it doesn't matter when you buy a car, the car. Yeah, they die on your birthday, they, which all of mine are dead. The no, you're not. Because in like you're 30 in days. You're in so July. Everything's I just dead. ordered I just, all of ours I just yesterday. got my entire stack in there. Yeah, I did like mine You need yesterday. to replace all of these registrations. And how about it was only $159 uh, well, to register five vehicles here. That's what I'm saying. Plus, like, you know, Virginia, say, for you example, like, we had that one dually up there, right? Just to renew the tags on the dually, it was like eleven or 1600 bucks for a year just to renew it because it and was diesel and they considered it as like a work truck because that's all that was up there in that area. So they capped stuff we're down here it's like you go to register your car for a year you go to register a bike for a year a truck for a year it's like 50 to 150 bucks that's it it doesn't matter really what you're doing it doesn't you're it just really basically doesn't. paying like a two-year registration renewal that's all you're doing ladies and gentlemen we want to hear your ideas for show topics like this and things we can talk about on the show just shoot them to us right here at facebook we'll, we'll even pick them up starting with tomorrow and if there's something show. you guys want to see too man if you guys are new viewers out there or even if you are a current viewer previous viewer or follower if there's something that you want to see maybe a ride that you have that you can't get to us at bem and you want to see maybe a personal tech tip or install on a Send specific product us product, let us know. We may be able to have a company send us in and get our hands on one of those rides so we can show you live on the spot how to do it. Mark Hoffman says, uh, the BEM driver says, speaking of Virginia, I was up near your old shop delivering parts last week. That old shop's gone. Isn't gone. It? Finished. Parking lot. Kind of a heartbreaker, isn't it? Nope. Nope. A lot of good years there. Yeah. So I got to get out of this thing. You guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for all the social media you're going to see. Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com, Miss Outlaw Boutique.com. Crazy stuff coming out of both sides of us right now. I will tell you, this Jeep is going to be one nasty beast next week. At the Luke Bryant uh, concert. You're gonna, yep. It's going to be out there with the uh, BEM uh, Miami Marlins uh, coach's That's right. Jeep, correct? Yep. That's right. Out there. Yeah, there's a yep. party out there. Tailgating from hell going on. Hey, man, there. it's going to be pretty solid.
Happy Father's Day weekend to all. No, Mark, thank you very much. Mark, you're going to call in tomorrow with an update, correct? Uh, let me know before we clear the air here. Is that okay, bud? Okay. I'm going to get him in and get an update. I'd like to have uh, updates from him weekly and know how the team's doing up there, man. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what else? Good night, Bob. That's it. I got to go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, until tomorrow, Bob. Just keep on doing it, Bob. With style. There it is. Mark, please let me know if you can give me a call in. Uh, call us in tomorrow so I can get it up for the world to see in the description of the show when I put it up later on. Ladies and gentlemen, we really appreciate you bringing us into your hearts, houses, and homes around the world. We certainly do. We really, really appreciate all your goodwill and all your positive thoughts and thinking. Let's reach out to touch somebody's life in a very positive manner today. Let's open the door so somebody who's got their hands full. If you're tired, doesn't matter, man. Drag yourself out of bed. You got life in your lungs, and you can see through your eyes and your ears. I'll tell you a quick story. I was just reading the Motley Crue book, and it's a very good book, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't, if you haven't, even if you're not a fan of the uh, of the glam rock. Uh, of the 80s. It's a very good book. The four of those, th those characters, Vince Neil, Tommy Lee, uh, Mick Mars, and uh, uh, who's the other one, Bob? Come on. It's, uh, Vin uh, Vince Neil. The four of them lived a lifestyle that you and I could no only dream of. Partying, running. I mean, it was just an out of control, outrageous lifestyle from the marriages to all the debauchery, just all of it, okay? To the hero, looking for heroin when they were, you know, in the back alleys of, of Japan and China. It's a great book. I, just, I, I encourage you to read. It's called The Dirt. I'm a musician. I love music. That's how I stumbled upon it. Thought they were a talented band. There's a portion in the, in the story that, ta that Vince Neil is talking about. I'm sorry, um, that Nikki Six is talking about. That's not his real name. Nikki Six is talking about how all of them had grown up from broken families, and that was part of, there was a lot of hatred, and they were looking for the love of their parents. Again, they could never find it. And he asked his mom about his sister, and his sister told her, his, his mom told him that there was, his sister divorced herself from the family. She wanted nothing to do with it. And it was later on in life, after he had gotten himself clean and off the heroin, which he, he, had, he followed up with a book called The Heroin Diaries. That's how de de deep he was in the heroin. He found out that his sister was a quadriplegic and uh, was a, had Down syndrome, not a quadriplegic, had Down syndrome and was a deaf mute. A deaf mute meaning couldn't speak, couldn't hear. And she had been confined to a wheelchair all of her life. And he said, for Christ's sakes, I used to shoot up 10 cc's of heroin and go on stage two blocks from where my sister was. So the point of the story is you never know who's out there and you never know what good you could be doing. He consequently wanted to change his sister's life and vowed when he came back off of tour uh, on one of their tours that he would take care of her and set her up for the rest of her life to make sure that she lived some part of her life in happiness. And by the time she got home, it was too late. She had passed away. So let's keep those things in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes it gets really hard to pull yourself out of bed because you're tired. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of stress that's on your shoulder. But remember, there's always a story that's worse than ours. And I hope that story makes resonates with you. So let's reach out to touch somebody's life in a positive manner and open those doors for somebody whose hands are full. Let's put shoes on somebody's feet who have holes in them. How about that, huh? And if somebody's hungry standing on the corner, take them next door to 7-Eleven, get them a power bar and a protein drink. It's cheaper than your designer cup of coffee. We're going to look forward to seeing you all on the number one rated internationally syndicated motorsports show tomorrow from 9 to 10 a.m. right here on the Bubba's Motorsports Facebook page and is heard on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, all the big platforms around the world. Until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep on doing it Bubba style.